YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop as we continue to build out this Triple BS knife lock. We're on, I think, uh, part number five now. So the goal today is we're getting down to some of these finishing steps. So we've got our handle slabs complete. These are tapped and ready to go. So we need to go in here and finish this blade. It's been heat treated. So we're gonna go through and finish the flats on this, get this to the, the width, make sure that any warpage, any little bit of twist we got from heat treating, we get all of that out. So we'll start by finishing the flats and then I will go through and finish the bevels. Once that is completely done, once we get this blade done, then we'll be able to move on to making some of the hardware. Once we have the width set, then we'll be able to make the bushing that's gonna go in here for the blade to, to pivot on. And we will also be able to make the spacers that are gonna go between our two handle slabs. The width of this blade is what's gonna determine the size for all of that hardware. And then the other piece we need to finish is the little cover plates that go on here. So there's little titanium cover plates that are gonna go on there. Uh, those need to be drilled and countersunk. And I'm also gonna put the patent number on one of those. It was recommended that somewhere on this design, I need to be able to put the patent number. So my plan is to put that on the cover plate that's gonna go on the right-hand side. So it's gonna be on the back side, same place where the pocket clip is. I'm just gonna go ahead and engrave that into that titanium cover plate that's gonna go on there. So in order to drill and countersink the holes in there, we're gonna use the Tormach, so I'm gonna set up We'll put an aluminum plate, we'll cut our groove in there. I'll have a, a couple of extra screws on the outside of that where I can hold the cover plate in place on the side where there is not a screw. And then we'll be able to drill around there, countersink them, and then we'll screw it down with those actual screws and then we'll use that to engrave. So anyway, that's sort of the rough process. We'll build that out as we go. We'll see how far we make it in this video, if we can get all of that done, or may have to go with one more video to finish putting it together. But main focus here, Let's get the blade done. Let's get the start on our bushings and our spacers. I think that's gonna be the, the goal for this video. And then probably that next video is where we'll get the Tormach set up and get the cover plates. And then we'll lay out all of the hardware. You'll see all the pieces and parts that go into this knife and we'll go through the assembly on it. For those of you subscribed to the channel, I sure appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments that have been coming in on the videos and the ideas on how to keep improving the channel. If you're new to the channel, want to see more videos on machining, welding, knife making, everything else going on here in the Blades to Be shop, great time to hit that subscribe button and would love to hear some comments from you as well. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into this and uh, we'll talk a little bit about this coot belt grinder that I've got here. I'll show you the different belts that we're going to use to go through and finish this and then we're going to get started finishing this blade. Let's get going. So this is a 72 inch coot belt grinder, pretty simple design. You just have one main wheel and the, uh, the idler wheel up at the top. Quick, easy to change belts. You can adjust the uh, tracking on your belts right there. And it does have a flat platen right here that we're gonna use to work on the flats today. Very simple design. I do most of the work just on the platen and the wheel. I know there's lots of other designs that have smaller wheels and uh, have some great versatility to them, but this is the one that I've had for several years now and it, it works really well for me. That's where we'll do a lot of the work today. And to work our way through finishing this, uh, today I'm going to start with kind of a worn out 60 grit belt and then we'll work our way up to 120, 220, spin this around and then we'll work our way up to 400 and then I'm going to finish it off with some 400 cork, just a little bit of flexibility in there to get rid of some scratches. So on the flats, we're going to go up to 400 cork to finish those. For a little contrast on the bevels, same thing, I'll start with that worn out 60 to get those going. And then we're just gonna finish the bevels out to 120, and then we're gonna touch it all on the buffer just to clean it up a little bit. And uh, hopefully that should give us a nice contrast with a near mirror polish on the flats and a little bit of a duller satin finish on the bevels. And I think that's gonna go nicely with the finish that we have on those handle slabs. So let's go ahead and get going on the grinder. All right, the other important thing to mention here is since this blade is already heat treated, we really have to make sure we don't overheat it or get it too hot. So I'm gonna be working without gloves to make sure that I can always be feeling the temperature of the blade. Also means I need to be careful, especially on this platen. These, uh, these coarse belts, they tend to stick over the edge a little bit and we're gonna be holding on to the, the beveled part of that blade and keeping the flat on the platen. So I need to make sure I don't get over there too close or I'll be uh, nicking my finger on that belt. So I'm gonna actually track the belt over a little bit more towards the edge of the platen. It'll be just a little bit off the wheel, but that'll keep me from uh, nicking the corner of my finger too much. And I've got a bucket of water down here and we'll be making sure we keep this really, really cool. So normally I would work one side and then work the other side a little bit sort of back and forth. But because uh, I have to change the camera angle so you can see what's going on the other way, we'll really work one side 
and get it pretty flat, get it done, and then I'll flip the camera around and we'll do the other side. So we'll start with our worn out 60 grit a little bit here. We'll get that flat, and then after that's done, we'll work our way the 120, 220 up to 400. You can actually see we're pretty flat here after the heat treat, so we're not going to be taking very much off of here at all. We're looking pretty good. We've got all the black out of there. We've got that all cleaned up with that 60 grit belt. Let me go ahead and move the camera around and we'll flip it over and we'll start cleaning up the other side. We'll get this belt tracked over the other way and we'll start grinding here on the back side. You can see that once again, we're in pretty good shape. It's pretty flat. Just have a little bit of black, a little bit we need to take out right in here. So we'll keep working that. All right, I am happy with how that's looking there. Got that cleaned up enough. Just maybe one little tiny spot right there, but that's gonna be hidden underneath our handle slab. So even if we miss a little scratch right there, we're not gonna be able to see that when it's done. So the other thing I decided on this knife is I do wanna put a little grind here on the backside. I should have done that before I heat treated it, but I decided I wanna put a little grind line back here on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I have this 60 grid on here as well before we move up to our next belt. So I'm just gonna kinda of blend from right by this point, blend down into the tip a little bit and just put a little grind line here on the back to just give it a little more character. We'll see how that looks and see if I do that carrying forward on these knives. exactly what I thought that was going to turn out like but that's how it did turn out so we'll see but I think that'll still look nice for us just gave it a little bit of extra shape and character there break up that blade profile a little bit so I think that looks good so now let's get our 120 on there and we will clean up the flats we'll clean up a little bit around the profile once we get the 120 on there and then we'll get it down to our 220 and our 400. And then we'll be just about ready to move on to those bevels. So there we worked it with that 120 belt. And you can see the reason we worked the flats first. It'll highlight any imperfections in your grind line. And we will fix those when we get to working on the bevels. All right, now we're going to go up to our 220 here. So we've got our 120 done. Let's hit our 220 and then our 400. All right, so it takes a little bit less time as we go up to the finer belts. So we've got our 220 finished on this side, starting to get some shine to it. We'll finish up our 220 over here, go to 400. I think I'm just gonna leave the camera set up there. We'll speed up a little bit here as we get through these last couple of steps. Now this cork belt just has a little flex to it so it really allows it to get in there and just kind of blend in any of those last scratches that we have. So we'll get this done. This is our final step and then we'll be ready to start all over again on the bevels. Right. 
and even before the buffing step, we're starting to get some nice looking shine here now as that cork belt really gets in there and cleans it up. You can see how that cork compares to just the 400 grit on the backside and back to that shiny cork. So there we've got our flats finished out on here now. So I'm gonna just take and do a little bit by hand on this flat up here, make sure I break that edge. Probably should have done that with a regular 400 belt instead of my cork. All those rough edges there are a little bit hard on my cork belt. So I'm gonna just touch up some of these edges a little bit in the vise by hand with some 400, and then we'll be ready to move on to our bevels. All right, I think we are ready to finish up these bevels. All right, I think that should be a pretty good camera angle to be able to see grinding on both sides of this. Get this back on our vice grips. Give ourselves something to hold on to. There we go. All right, let's get in there and finish up these bevels. You can see on our grind line, it's a little high up in here and on this side it's it's a little low, so we're pretty good on this side. We've got to move it up just a little higher on this side, I think, to balance it out. We'll just make sure we're keeping it nice and cool in between. Starting out a little low there, I need to work my way up a little higher. And I got way too thin on that front edge there. I cooked the blade off a little bit. So I'm gonna get on there, I'm gonna flatten that back, save it, and redo that front edge. Well, I was able to flatten that front edge, just change the profile a little bit on this blade, but uh, flatten that out. And now we're gonna move up to our 120 and we should still be able to save this without any trouble. Well, I am happy with how that came out. Not happy about making a little bit too thin there and having to go a little bit in and modify the profile, but I think we turned out all right. So I think from our grind line here, we're fairly even on both sides, ready to go take that over and touch that on the buffer and, and clean that up. You can see a little bit, I may just take one more. I see a little bit of a flat spot right there on the tip. So I may just go a little bit more right there can see that that will buff out but we'll still try to clean that up a little bit there and maybe just a shade on this one too on the tip 
So maybe I'll just take another quick pass just to try to get the tip a little bit closer, but otherwise, I think we're ready to run this over to the buffer and then we'll start making some hardware. All right, we'll go ahead and get this buffed. I'm gonna buff the bevels first while I've got the vice grips on and then I'll get that out and we'll buff the flats out a little bit. And there we go. Got near mirror on the flats. A little rougher contrast there on the bevels. Got one little flat spot showing up there at the end of that bevel. I'm going to go in there and try to hand rub that a little bit. The other side is looking pretty good. Well, here's how that came out overall. I'm pretty happy with the grind line on this side. Looks pretty good on this side. Uh, I tried to clean up that tip a little bit. I think I was just making it worse. And some days you're just not having your best grind line days and you got to know when to stop chasing it or you're just going to keep making it worse. So anyway, not very happy with how that turned out up there on the tip. But overall, the rest of the blade, I think we're in good shape and uh, we will be able to fit some hardware. And again, the whole goal with this first one is to make sure that we have a good shape design, all the pieces fit together. So that's what we're going to keep moving forward towards and make sure that we have good fit. So I'm just going to take and I already scraped out some of the buffing compound from uh, inside my grooves there with a screwdriver. I'm just going to make sure we get all that buffing compound cleaned up out of here and then we're going to fit our quarter inch bushing in here. We'll get that lapped down to just a couple thou wider than our blade so we've got a nice fit with that bushing and then we'll be ready to start fitting this together into our handle slabs. All right well let's go grab the mic let's measure that and let's figure out what we need to do for our bushing. Well, I went and had some lunch and, you know, I said you got to know when to stop chasing the grind line, but you also have to know when you're just not going to be happy with something. And I knew I wasn't going to be happy pulling it out of my pocket the way that looked before. I went and put that back on that 400 cork belt and that 400 cork just has enough flex to it that I think that did a nice job of blending in those couple of little issues I was having there on the tip. And I think that made for a much better looking finished product and grind line. So again, hit it with the 400 cork, put it back on the buffer, and I think that that is looking significantly better. So now let's work on fitting our quarter inch bushing in here, and then we'll make our spacers for the backside. All right, so our next step here is we need to figure out the thickness of our blade so we can make our bushing in there. Now, we finished this by hand on that grinder, so I'm not expecting it to be perfectly flat. I'm at about 148 and a half right there, about 149 and a tenth, all the way down to 148 and all the way up to about 149 and a half there. So we've got about a thou and a half a difference around there just from the thickness of finishing that by hand, but everything is all just under 150 so I'm going to make my bushing about 151 maybe 152 thick to give myself clearance around there we'll probably as we're lapping it we'll probably stop at about 153 and check our fit on there make sure it's not going to be too tight but we'll probably end up with about 152 I think is what I'll finish that bushing to and what that looks like is I've got these little hardened bushings from USA Knife Supply it's 3 16 ID for our pivot pin to go through and then a quarter inch OD. It's hardened stainless, 
So I'm going to put this in a collet chuck and we're going to face this to within about five or six thou and then we'll take it over and we will finish lapping it or sanding it on a piece of glass. We'll do that here in a moment. The other piece we're going to do while we're in the lathe is we're going to make the titanium spacers for the back of the knife. So again, where this bolts together, we've got our three holes here to hold it together and we're going to make the spacers that go in there. So if we are 152 thick on our bushing, the other piece that fits in there is this little washer. So we're gonna put these little washers on each side. They are 16 thou thick. So we're gonna make our titanium spacers are gonna be 32 thou thicker than that bushing. So we're gonna be going for 0.184. So we're gonna knock out those three titanium spacers. They're just gonna be drilled 1 8 in the middle, turned quarter inch on the outside. We'll do all that here in the collet chuck. So we should be able to knock that out pretty quickly. And then we'll go lap that bushing down to size. And that's probably gonna be it for this video. And then the next one, we'll be finishing those cover plates and assembling the whole night. But we'll be able to test fit this and just see how it's going together and how it looks before the end of this one. For this hardened bushing, again, I wanna turn it down to about probably 156, 157 even. Give myself enough to sand off of there. Right now I'm at 240. So 0.240 minus 0.157 we'll go with. So I'm taking about 83 thou off of there. I like to try to keep the good side, one side of this good and do all my work on the other side. I trust that whoever manufactured this kept it nice and square to start with. So I'm gonna try to do all my work on one side. So I'm gonna hold that in my collet chuck here. And I want to take 83 thou off of there. That's about what I could get to what I had left sticking out of my collet chuck, which was about 77 thou. So I'm at 162, that leaves me a full 10 thou to sand off of there, but I think that'll still go fairly quickly, so let's run over, or actually let's finish making our titanium spacers, and then we'll go over and we'll, uh, we'll sand 10 thou off of that, and should have a nice bushy. All right, I'm pretty sure if I leave a one and a quarter inch sticking out on here, then I'm gonna be able to finish all three of those without having to move that out of the collet. And I'll just drill in a little bit each time, part it off, drill in, part it off. And, but I'll turn the outside. We're only taking a 64th off. This is 17 64th titanium. So just barely over, you know, just a 64th over a quarter inch. So I'm gonna take about 12 thou off the outside. I'm gonna take a fairly rough cut, try to leave a little bit of a, uh, you know, be able to see a little bit of the finish on that. I think that'll look kind of neat for these spaces. So we're going to do a fairly core speed, take about 12 thou off of the outside, and then drill in and go from there. I can even, I mean, if we're taking 16, I guess I can even take anywhere from 12 to 14 off, but let's see how that's going to look. Just that nice, kind of a rough finish, give it a little bit of a ripply look there on the outside. So I think that is going to be perfect. All 
I really just wanted to spot that with the center drill on there. And we are going to drill these with a 1 8 carbide drill. So my plan is I'm going to drill them each one as I go. So I'm not drilling in there too deep at the moment. Enough to part one off and then we'll go back and we will drill one more. See what kind of fit that would give me yes all right don't need to ream these that's going to give me a plenty good fit on there just need clearance over these for those spacers all right let's part one off and knock out a couple more of these all right so if i touch off here on the end i should be going over 0.2675 So it definitely needs the center in there to be able to park these and I think I chipped that insert when it first bounced on me so let's try again here. process needs a little bit of work here that definitely parted off nice but I need to drill a little deeper so that it goes through there a little cleaner tried to drill that nub off and that was a absolute no-go lucky I didn't break my drill there went ahead and just faced it off instead yeah don't get to shortcut like you do with aluminum when you're messing with titanium just need to take your time and do every step these a little bit of a chamfer as well. And let's see how we did on width on our other one. Make sure we got a good process here. Yeah, we are at 183. Going for 184. Within a thou, I would say we are good. I tell you what, that parting tool didn't want to start very well. I'm going to double check and let's make sure we are properly on center with this. Let's try that. I think that'll work a little better.
All right, that one is done. We're good on width. I like this better. We're a little beveled on both sides, and I'll throw that quarter inch collet back in there in a second so that I can grab onto it to just deburr the inside of that real quick. So let's knock out our last one here. And we definitely drilled deep enough that time that I should be able to quickly face this off and just continue drilling in there. within half a thou, 184, and yeah, nice bevel on both sides. Cool looking finish on the outside of those. I think we did all right. one. Now this one we parted a little cleaner but we didn't get a bevel on the outside of it. Let's see if we can't just touch that up a little. It's gonna be close. Was not able to get in there well enough to clean those up. Change the tools, turn the tool post a little bit, and was able to get both sides cleaned up. All right, this was the first one. This one's a couple thou, about a thou and a half narrower than the other two, but that's all right for our spacers. I think we're in good shape. So we got the outsides of this bevel too. Well, you gotta love a collet chuck for being able to grab onto little tiny stuff and still be able to touch it up and machine it. Well, there are those little spacers. Let's try and roll those around and see if you can get a good shot of that finish on the outside of those there. I think that'll show up a little bit. I think those turned out all right. Just have a nice little bit of a wavy finish on the outside. Should give some cool contrast on the spine of our knife as we get that done. Now let's get over here with our bushing, our piece of glass and our sandpaper, and let's get that bushing done, and then we'll give this a test fit before we wrap up our video. All right, well, here's how we're gonna finish that bushing. This is a pivot lap from Knife Dogs. So it just really helps hold that bushing nice and square. So same thing, I'm gonna to try to stick with keeping one side good from the factory. And we just set our bushing in there. I've got a little piece here to put some pressure and we'll start lapping that down. So I'm gonna start with some 220 paper. Try to keep it moving, spinning, not just going all one direction here. And we'll see how we're doing. Comes off quicker than you might think. So yes, that already took five thou off of there, but you can see we're keeping it relatively square. We're within about half a thou of so of being square. And again, we're going for, we'll try to fit it at 53 first and see if we want to take a little more off. The wider paper works nice. We're going to finish it with that. I probably need to get some wider 220 to help with this process. Get a little more of a circular pattern on this wider stuff.
All right, the wider stuff flattened us out a little bit. So I'm 53 to 53 and a half. I'm really going for 52, so I think I'm gonna go just a little more here before we even test fit it that first time. Just go light, see if I can't flatten that out a little more. About 50, two and a half to maybe 50, two and six tenths in my thickest spot. So yeah, I think we're a good spot to give this a try. Let's try fitting this together. All right, so let's do our test fit and see how we are coming along here. So we'll put that on, get our bushing on there, and that one, okay, that was our test fit piece for holding it onto our machining jig, so that is a little bit too narrow. We need to have a wider pivot pin on there to have enough room to get into our other plate. All right, let's try again. We've got one here that's full length. Make sure we have a little lube on that pivot. Stop pin in there. All right, well now that we've got these shortened, let's get this together. So I'm gonna put the screws in the end that I just ground. Make sure they go in there nice. Sometimes when you grind them off, not gonna get quite as good a fit, but so far we're doing well. Run that fingers and toes here to keep everything in there together. Now the cover lines up on there nice. Everything drops into place like it's supposed to be. Let's get the rest of these screws in here. There we go. Now we've got everything the right length that it'll go tight. Feeling good so far here. Make sure everything is really snugged up. Well, there is our test fit. Bushing yeah, just gets a little snug there on the top, but that's, that's a nice feel right there. So just what we're looking for. Feels very nice in there. You can see our blade is nice and centered up in our frames. We've got good fit on the back side for our spacers. They are just right up there. Good fit on our blade inside. Got enough clearance around there. You're not gonna stab yourself. So all down in here, we've got the fit that we're looking for. Get your finger on there to flip it nice. I think we have a good test fit. So we are in good shape for our next video. All we have to do is work on the cover plates and the lock mechanism. So again, on this cover plate on the back, I'm gonna work on engraving, put the patent number across there. And on this side, won't have anything on it. So the plates are opposite. We just need to drill those and countersink them to be able to screw those in place. And then uh, the last thing we'll do is we'll come back and we will etch the Blades to Be logo in there. I like to put it right in the notch on this one. I think it fits in there nicely. So we'll do that on the next video as well. But from a test fit, really happy with how that came out. I like the spacers on the back. You know, looking at where the holes line up for that lock mechanism, it looks like everything is in good shape. And that opens up. You can see the holes lining up in there. So I think we are going to be in good shape to fit that lock mechanism. 
So we'll get the Tormach, we'll get a little bit of programming in there to be able to hold those cover plates into a jig so that we can drill and countersink them and then also be able to hold them so that we can put the patent number on that back plate. And then we will have a knife complete. And it'll be time to go into production mode and see if we can't crank out a little bit of volume on these and get some of these done and ready to go. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop. We made some great progress on this triple BS folder. We are now together. We've got a test fit. We got these handle slabs completely done. Got the blade completely finished today and fit a little bit of hardware together. Got a test fit to make sure that everything is lining up the way we want. Next time around, we just have to finish working on that lock mechanism and this knife will be complete. We'll be ready to go into production mode. As always, appreciate you watching these videos. If you have subscribed to the channel and been leaving comments and likes on here, I sure appreciate the taking the time to do that. If you're new to the channel, want to see more videos on what we're doing here in the Blades to Be shop, including finishing out this Triple BS knife next time around, then great time to hit that subscribe button and, uh, and join the channel. As always, if you have feedback on the channel, ideas on how to make these videos better, how to improve the channel overall, I would love to hear it. Until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own, making some chips of your own. We'll be here in the Blades to Be shop wrapping up this Triple BS folding knife. Till we get that next video out, y'all take care.